Hi everyone, thanks for being here, thanks to the panelists. Um, I guess let's just kick it off with a quick round of introductions. Um, let us know what you all do and what the projects you're working for do. Okay, so my name is Camila Ramos, and I'll preface it with saying, you know, we all have like 17 jobs, so I'll name the relevant ones here. Um, I'm the head of developer relations at Fuel Labs. I'm a core contributor at Women Build Web 3, which is what we're going to be focusing on today for my end. And I'm a lifelong educator. I've been in education for seven years now, and that's what I did before becoming an engineer, and then eventually before kind of transitioning back into education via DevRel. Hey, thanks for having me. My name is Divyanshu. Um, I work at Devfolio, where we have built the biggest Web3 dev community in India. Uh, we do different programs such as hackathons, uh, fellowships, we do grants, and a bunch of other stuff. We are also co-host of ETH India, which is scheduled to be the biggest uh, Web3 Ethereum hackathon in Asia. So, yeah. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Yan. Um, I'm from China. I'm a de defined developer. Uh, last year, I built a, a developer community in China called Dev Learning. Yeah, we sponsored by Ethereum Foundation twice. Uh, uh, thanks. Yeah. Hello, I'm Lush. I'm here with IT Blockchain, which is biggest and first blockchain club in Turkey. We do lots of educational and event stuff. And we are grantee in ESP with our open source bootcamp for smart contract developing. Also, I'm smart contract developer in Italian studio. And I'm the biggest supporter of the Constable proposal. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, guys. Um, what got you all motivated to start an educational series? Why, why is it important to educate, um, and how did you all get involved with it? I can start. Uh, we, as a university club, we want to be different from the other university club in our school, in our country. And we want to be a club which builds, which produces, which makes lots of beneficial stuff as a public good. And in first, we couldn't do anything because we are very started at the first times. And First, we educated ourselves. Then we realized that we need more friends to build together. Then we do a few groups to help people to learn something. Then it failed. Then we thought we should do more open, more accessible content. And so that we can help people to join Web3 development. Then we, we see Lots of people from Turkey are learning with us. Then we see we are joining hackathons and the tape. Only the top tier folks who get access to premium institutes, they get a lot of opportunities while the other folks really don't. Uh, also, so what we, we thought that's some BS, uh, what we did was we started doing our programs and what really got us into the Ethereum ecosystem was the ethos of um, decentralization, being accessible, being permissionless. So we started off with ETH India in 2018, uh, and since then we have done a bunch of ETH India and ETH India online hackathons. Uh, like I said, we have done fellowships, um, and yeah, we have been doing since then. Uh, we are now at 250,000 devs in our community. So yeah, we're still going strong, and yeah, we'll talk about, more about it. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, last May, I helped my friends to hold a hackathon in China and I worked as uh, the advisor. Um, during two days of competition, I found, uh, I found, I found uh, many developers. There, there was a huge gap among the developers. Uh, although they, most of them know how to code uh, with solidity, but uh, uh, man, many of them uh, don't know the base components of dev development, such, such as using Chainlink, Graph, uh, IPFS, yeah. Then, um, few of them uh, know the famous project, uh, Scaffold ETH, which can save them a lot of time developing their MVP in Hexon. And so they, 
spend too much time on Google. <laughs> yeah. So at the, at the same time, my friend Jolie, who wanted to learn blockchain, so I advised advise him to learn dev development directly. Yeah, it can show the, uh, save you a lot of time. Uh, then uh, I had the idea to build an open source project to help developers to learn dev development. We called the open source project dev learning directly. Yeah. Uh, so that's my motivation. Thank you. Yeah, so Women Build Web 3 is a community for intermediate and um, advanced developers. And, you know, I came from a Web 2 background. I was an engineer at PayPal, and I kind of started experimenting with crypto and blockchain development on the side. And when I was ready to dive in, there weren't really that many communities specifically for my type of person. I found a lot of communities were onboarding women and were doing kind of zero to one stuff. And I was looking for where can I go from like one to 10? How can I actually start building, given that I have all of the, the baseline things to start? And it came together around Web3Con, which is the hackathon that Developer DAO organizes. And we were all kind of like, how do we find teammates who are women that are kind of on my level so we can build something dope? And we realized there really didn't exist that community. And I just happened to tweet out, this was back like six months ago, before I had Twitter followers. And I just happened to tweet, is there anyone who wants to be on my team who's like an engineer, who's a girl? We can build something cool. And I expected maybe two or three people to reach out. And maybe like 45 women ended up reaching out and being like, I want to participate. Like I've been looking for something like this. So that's how we initially got together. We hacked. Uh, we shipped a bunch of cool stuff. And after we looked around and we're like, all right, we have this really cool community of engineers. What should we do next? And as we were experimenting, you know, potentially expanding the program that we built or the project we built at the hackathon, we realized there really wasn't a lot of high quality educational resources that were up to date, um, that weren't like blatant shills. So there's a lot of, you know, platforms out there that have kind of like their own type of course, but they basically just keep using their thing over and over. And it wasn't, we really couldn't find anything where we could kind of level up for blockchain development. And as we got together, we decided let's build this open source course called Building Full Stack Dapps, where we walk people through everything from writing a smart contract, writing API, writing their front end, doing off-chain storage, and kind of just getting through the full stack. And not just putting the education out there, but really walking people through it because our goal was less about teaching you how to code. Like we're not going to sit there and teach you like what a struct is and what an array is. We actually just give you the code and, and we kind of focus on bigger picture thing where it's like now you have this architectural reference for how to build a DAP and then you can tweak it and you know go back and learn the things that you maybe don't know but now you have this thing that you can fork and always build something that works from. And uh, since we launched it, we, we launched it in English and Spanish, over 10,000 lines of curriculum and over 2,500 devs have taken it so far. And that was kind of part one of our initiative. And then we started thinking, okay, how can we support the teams that come from this? How can we like stick to our mission of, you know, supporting the growth of developers? So then we worked with the EF and a bunch of other amazing organizations who contributed to our project to start an accelerator where we're deploying $150,000 uh, directly to teams with no strings attached just to support their projects and kind of just be like, we just want to give money to people building dope stuff. And that's where we are now. We just accepted our first cohort of the Accelerator like this week, and it launches officially uh, on Monday. That is awesome. Um, thanks to, for everyone um, to, for the work that you're doing and for all the people that you've already onboarded to this space. Um, it's something that's incredibly important. So something that you've all sort of touched on in, in this last part, um, the title is Education Across Cultures. So how do you all think about the cultural nuances or the language barriers or something specific to your region or community when creating educational content? We are trying to prepare our contents that's how, by thinking how we can learn by these contents. We had too much time to learn them and maybe we see lots of contents and we can combine them and create a content like how we can learn and our friends are similar to us and how they can learn. It's one of the key are what we try to do. Also, we prepared our lots of contents, coding comments or namings are in English. We are not pushing them to doing everything in Turkish. Just we are trying to tell what is the main reason on what we are doing that and 
It's just only Turkish parts. We are preparing them to do really sectoral stuff and help them by their native language as a banning the barriers. So, um, thankfully, like we don't have to translate lang uh, language co of the uh, content, given that in, in India, English is uh, normally spoken, and also the language of education. Uh, but how we go about educating folks and onboarding them to Web3 is, and our motto is never stop building. So how we go about it is even in our fellowships where we take them through a curriculum, everything is focused on building. So every module have, has a task where you have to build something out and the entire eight week course finalizes, uh, culminates into a final building sprint. So as long as you're building, we believe if you build, you'll learn. So that's what we have been focusing on. As so any, any program that we do is kind of centered around building projects. Okay. Uh, most uh, content uh, of uh, our GitHub is still uh, Chinese, yeah, but uh, I wanted to, wanted to introduce is that uh, our government rules that is very interesting. We attract most of the Chinese excellent developers and oversee Chinese developers, yeah. Uh, our, so first of all, our, uh, our community is a non-profit organization. Yeah, core members are driven by interest and passion. Yeah, we we are funded uh, by grant and uh, donation. Grant such as uh, Ethereum Foundation grant, uh, Gitcoin grant, donation such as uh, Chinese famous project uh, like uh, Blueprint, Score, Novus. Yeah. Uh, our government has uh, three points. Uh, the first one is that people who submit a pull request or give a sharing meeting in our community can join our developer group. So uh, it helps me got, gather many talented developers in our community uh, to help us build together. Yeah, at the same time, they can enjoy high quality uh, communication with other developers. So, uh, the second one is that uh, with more and more developers to join our community, we set a limit of 120 uh, people. <coughs> uh, but uh, we build a new communication, uh, communication group that uh, there is no thread, uh, <coughs> threshold here. Uh, the last one is an uh, interesting one that uh, uh, we are a high quali qualified uh, developers, so many, many guys want to advise or other, other, advise or post a recruitment in our community. So we we add a rule that you must submit, a, you must give a sharing meeting, yeah, to show your technology level. Yeah, then you can send a recruitment uh, post in our community. Yeah, that's all. Thank you. Yeah, I think for us, um, we ship, like I said, initially everything in English and Spanish, and it, that was important to us to not have it be later translated as like a second thought but rather you know we want to be inclusive and obviously like that's not every language in the world we're not impacting all the developers in the world and you know the culture of our community is shaped by those in it and it just so happens that some of our core contributors are latino so that's how it worked out that way but i think there's a really special kind of nuance about Latin America that isn't really understood by developer communities focused in North America and Europe is that similar to kind of hacker culture 20, 30, 40 years ago before computer science was really something that you could take in school, people who learned how to code just like learned on their own. They were hackers. So you know right, computer science people weren't always academics. And it's a similar story in Latin America where if you're a coder, it runs the possibility that you actually don't speak English because you might not have gone to college. You might have just learned how to code by yourself. And for us, that's like a huge problem because we're missing out on all of the talent that is actually good engineering talent, but everything is in English. So that's something that we keep in mind where in Latin America, the way it kind of works is that if you go to a good school and if you go to university and you get the privilege of being educated, you probably know English because they teach it in school. But if you come from you know that background where you're not offered that opportunity, but you somehow get to teach yourself how to code, which that in, in and of itself is a huge feat. Uh, we're like, we as a community, 
are giving them more blockers where everything's in English. All of the um, Ethereum conferences are in North America and Europe where they can't get visas. So this year for me was really special to see Def Con be in Colombia. This is where I'm from. But outside of that, ETH Global also focused on Latin America this year doing a bunch of hackathons here for the very first time. And I think just this was a really good place for us to get together because I think more people are starting to think globally and are starting to think about the what happens when we don't think of others and not just from a moral perspective, like we should do this because it's good, because we should, but we should do this if we want innovation. And if we want the best talent from all over the world, we have to be able to reach them. And um, what do you think needs to happen for us to reach more people, either globally or in your local communities? Um, what is something that's missing that we need to reach and educate more people? When some newcomers see some experts from the sector, for example, some good developers from Ethereum, they are more willing to do something or they are more willing to learn something. I think some events or hackathons or little educations that focused on some little regions can be more effective to take more newcomers to the real world. Yeah, I think the answer is pretty straightforward. Just like give money. <laughs> like give money, let the experts in the field do what they do. It's not scalable for us to be like we're gonna go to every country and do an ETH hackathon and like, you know, try to translate everything in Spanish. It's more sustainable to instead empower people who are already leaders in their communities, give them money, give them resources, give them support, and just let them do their thing. And that's exactly what we've, we've like ITU is a great example of that. They are from Istanbul and they just decided like, hey, we want to see a change. They got support from the EF and other people, and now there's a growing community to the point that DevCon might be there next year, like simply because this one group of kids decided that they wanted to start this community and, you know, a community like us happened to get behind them. So just give money. I agree. Um, so <laughs> giving EF has been great, uh, giving support to all the programs and everything that has been happening across the globe. Uh, but also adding to his point, I think uh, we need more advocates, uh, we need more educators. Uh, and the reason why also we are calling ETH India the biggest, Asia's biggest Ethereum hackathon is uh, there are not a lot of events happening there. Like Camilla mentioned, it's a lot of events in North America, now in Latin as well, uh, but not that much in, let's say, Asia. So the idea is to bring bring in more advocates, bring in more exposure, and I think for, for the rest, EF has been great supporting us. <coughs> okay. Uh, our community is not all only a developer community. We also translate uh, uh, MIT open course blockchain and money uh, taught by Grenzler, uh, SEC chairman. Yeah, it's a very wonderful uh, course that we translated it to Chinese and uh, summarize it. Yeah, to help more people to know blockchain and uh, Web3. Yeah. Uh, what's more, we we also uh, in, uh, translate the uh, Soviet interviews. Uh, this book, yeah, is uh, also a very wonderful book. Help uh, to help people know cryptocurrency. Yeah. So through this way, we attract many uh, non-developers to join our community. Okay. And whether what does it work? Yes, it does. Uh, what are some of the biggest? <laughs> no, um, I was just testing, <laughs> testing, testing. So, uh, what are some of the biggest challenges that you have faced in getting to this point, and how do you see your projects evolving moving forward? Um, right. So, like I said, uh, so what we do is we work with a bunch of educators and mentors. Uh, it has been a challenge to find a lot of them. Our folks like Austin Griffith and Patrick Collins have been of help but I don't think we have enough. So I would ask people to get more into education and get more into educa advocacy. Um, but for, for our community, a couple of challenges that have been there. Um, one is that in India, while Web3 and Ethereum is going mainstream in the dev community, 
it's still not going mainstream for the for the for the end users. So oftentimes, what we see is uh, the devs who are building for the community who is building is not the end user. So that's a problem that they, they, we have faced and we are kind of trying to solve for. And again, with Web3 and with Ethereum, uh, a lot of folks are in it for, I would say, not the right motivations. So we have been kind of focused on finding that right signal compared to all the fluff that is in the ecosystem. So that's something that we have been trying to tackle and focus on. I think two biggest challenges are motivation and sustainability. We should motivate our educators to, to do something in continuous way. They should do their responsibilities on time. It's one of the biggest problems and how we are deal with them is showing some results, some we showing some people who learned with us, showing our resource in some other places. And the sustainability on, on about that, we, we cannot do everything in each year. We, some newcomers sh should take our place and give some more better things than us. If we can find some newcomers and we can help them to do some real things, it will be great and we are dealing with them with doing more educations, more meetups, more workshops. And I can't say we deal with both of them, but we are working and we are talking with our friends to how to deal with them. Well, there are two challenges that we are, we are facing now. The first one is that uh, how to internationalize our community. Yeah. We are not only want to be a local community, but also meet global developers. Yeah, we we have invited many um, famous uh, project uh, uh, developers to give a shiny meeting in our community, uh, like uh, Stackwell, uh, Infra, and uh, Mina. Yeah, uh, but you know, I find an interesting phenomenon is that in China and. I see many talent uh, developers uh, who are good at uh, math and coding, but uh, their English is not so well. Yeah, it is their limit. Yeah. So uh, we are trying our best to translate in our project and uh, invite more uh, international project to give a shiny meeting. The, the second one is that uh, with our uh, project uh, the motor motor uh, accumulating uh, it is becoming more and um, uh, more hard, harder for more and more harder for com for newcomers to join us to to make a contribution and uh, uh, become the corn corn contributor yeah I think for us the biggest challenge is been, and we're kind of just heading it now is kind of sustainability. We never wanted to be a community that was funded by grants because that's just not sustainable. And we actually came together around April, like peak bull market, and it was really easy to get support from organizations. But we kind of knew that just wasn't the path we wanted to go out. So we had this idea to be a service DAO where we would do DevRel. And that's kind of how this idea of the open source course that we did came from. Where we're like, you guys need DevRel. You can't hire DevRel. We're educators who are willing to you know, create this content as a public good. So pay us for it. And that's what happened. Um, and it went amazing. But now things have changed. Um, companies, it turns out you actually have to keep working to do it. And we're like, wow, we just did six months of work to build this course. We're exhausted. We don't really want to do this again because where is the time to then work on our own skills and kind of tend to the mission that we first set out to be? Um, so for us, I think we're thinking through how can we sustainably stay alive and fund our core team who's working and you know make sure that they're taken care of fund all of the things that we need to pay for which which aren't much right it's like but we do need money to continue the projects that we're doing and um it's really a matter of like how do we split up our limited time between being a service now and making money to sustain ourselves and then actually serving our members and serving ourselves by using that money and putting it to use and in this first iteration that looks like the accelerator but now we're kind of like, all right, we're going to spend all the money in our treasury, which is good. That was what we wanted. We wanted to deploy all the money. Uh, the goal is not to build up a huge treasury and just have it. The goal is to deploy it. And now we're thinking through, how do we do this again without doing 
six months of work because that was scary <laughs> and it was a lot of work. And, you know, I mean, imagine it was a team of like 30 people working 10 to 20 hours a week for four and a half months to deliver, to deliver like the highest quality content in English and Spanish. And then like coordinating speakers, coordinating, um, the VCs that we wanted them to talk to, coordinating the supporters, coordinating the mentors. So that's kind of our, our problem is like, how, what, what's next for us? How do we do it sustainably and still stay true to our mission? And building on something that you said, I guess, um, is how do you all think of forkability and open sourcing the content and everything that you're working on? Yeah, no, all our stuff is open sourced. We encourage people to make PRs against it, keep it up to date as a community. Part of our treasury goes to paying our contributors to make sure that that stays up to date because obviously we don't want to be those projects we were kind of trying to solve the problem for, which is that there is a lot of education, but if you leave it alone for a month, it's already out of date. If you leave it alone for a week, it's probably already out of date. And when you build something like we did with literally like six or seven protocols, that thing, whew, like you need to work on it every day if you want it to still work. So it's open for contributions. Women Build Web 3 on GitHub. Go update it. <laughs> when we start to create our contents, we have a few promises between our team. One is being free and never accept any money from our learners. And other one is being open source to be to reach more audience by our content. Uh, if we, if someone can fork our education and do something better, we will be really happy. Also, if someone use our content and makes another content, it's really good for us. It shows our work is really beneficial and we can reach lots of people with them and we always think everybody can use our education everybody can add our education to their contents also we get some offers to add our educations to their learning schedule and we say it's, it's not our it's only open source and it's everyone's <laughs> And we are open for everything. Well, while uh, our fellowship curriculum is not open source right now, uh, we are planning for it. We want to open source it. Um, currently, it's maintained by our team, which is a task. Uh, but yeah, the plan is to open source it so the communi community can drive it and yeah, we can go from there. In my opinion, yeah, uh, GitHub, uh, Notion, and uh, Google Doc is necessary. Yeah, uh, our if someone wanted to join our community, you can uh, put a request. Yeah, then our core contributor will view your pull request and uh, merge or not. Yeah, uh, yeah. If someone wanted to give a shiny meeting in our community. You just uh, uh, write down your schedule on our Google Doc, and uh, we will arrange a meeting for you. Yeah, so it's very decentralized and easy for comparison. Yeah, uh, the, sec the second one is we are trying our best to translate our content into English. Yeah, we force our developers to learn English too. Yeah. Yeah, so as someone working, spending most of my time on an open source project, which is ethereum.org, um, I can also say that open sourcing stuff can lead to massive improvements. A lot of why ethereum.org is a great resource is because anyone can contribute to the code or the content or the design or the translations, um, all the aspects of it, really. So, um, yeah. Um, I think we're approaching time. Does anyone else have any questions? I'm coming. Um, hi. Hello. Thank you for this panel. Um, I really agree with most of the thing that the panelists said. Um, so I just want to like a bit background. We're a group of uh, Farsi speakers that we studied in 2014 and work, working on blockchain education and non -profit, all non-profit. We even like translated tra ethereum.org to Farsi. Um, one of the main challenges we have is uh, we never got any reply from any of the funds, you know, EF included, uh, just because of the keyword Iran, I think. And uh, we even got our Gitcoin grants for non-profit education on, for, done by women blockchain Farsi uh, suspended just because of the keyword Iran. 
And we are really challenging. We're self-funded for the last eight years. Um, and I would say it's our last breath, breath, breath. And we really need the support, like even motivational support. Just say, say hey, we got like you guys doing well or something. And uh, not even just funds. Um, just want to say this is a unique challenge we're facing. And I really want the community to talk about this rather than just um, do the sanction treatment, which is like not, do not engage. And um, yeah, that's maybe. Thanks for bringing that up. Really, thank you. Um, I don't follow, I don't have any rules. So apply for a grant through Women Build Web 3. Uh, we deploy capital directly to teams doing cool things like you guys. So happy to talk after. I'm sure the EF team, I don't know what their response is, but I'm sure you could talk to someone in person today. And I'm sure they're super grateful for all of your contributions. And yes, let's please talk after this. Anybody else have anything to add? Rob? Uh, I was wondering, uh, do you find there's like a content, uh, like the subjects of the examples of your tutorials or your, or the, technolo the technology in your tutorials that are uh, culturally specific or mo motivating, uh, like something in one culture wouldn't work in another in terms of the examples? We also, thanks for the drop, are one of the first tutorials in our club was with Rob from Remix and thank you for, again. Um, we are preparing the, our contents like thinking how it benefits to persons to work in a global project and create a global impact with their knowledge. So we don't do any cultural specific content but we think cultural specific things only on thinking about how our friends can learn by our contents. We don't do any cultural specific things by like geographic region, but as a community of women and non-binary people, we have noticed, and through just my career as an educator, I've noticed <coughs> work that has to do with improving real humans' lives is what writes the generalization, okay? But women tend to be more interested in things like that, where it's like we, an example of, I don't know, minting a token, hasn't really been that impactful. But when we talk about how this can actually affect real people in real communities, people are a lot more excited about that in our community specifically. So for our course, for example, instead of doing some like financial use case, which is good, uh, the group kind of decided to do this Web3 version of Eventbrite. If you know the platform, it's like an event creation and management platform. And then from there, all the teams that have applied to the accelerator, and I know because I've read the applications, they're all like solving real world problems. And then it's just funny as like a hackathon judge and an educator, then you go to like a hackathon and see the projects by men and it's like 1000% yield farming, crypto dick butt.com. It's like all the craziest things. So not like region specific, but I do think there's like a cultural piece there amongst like women versus men. Thank you. We have one more over here. Just two minutes. Um, um, last year, you know, so we worked on creating some learning content and uh, I have some credentials uh, working with a community of close to 17,000 developers. So just a suggestion for all of you to think about the framework in which you're building your learning content and communities. So the way we looked at it is learning is not a standalone silo. Like, you know, you have, in the Web3 world specifically, if you are looking at making learners Web3 builders, uh, you should look at it as learn, collaborate, build, and earn. All the four are important. Uh, you know, if you want uh, your learners to get tangible outcomes. So the most important thing here that a lot of people uh, leave out is the collaborate part. How can you look at your learners immediately finding some things, avenues to collaborate with people and working on, so typically learning starts, a lot of people attempt the one-on-ones. But beyond that, you know, the real stuff, the fun starts when people start looking at intermediate to advanced uh, <coughs> learning. That's where you start building. And for that, you know, when you have a group of people collaborating, they can, build, they can start building great stuff. And this is where contributing uh, to the ecosystem, getting some grants, all those things come into picture. So when you are uh, looking at you now, uh, now uh, improving or expanding your communities, please look at the collaboration part and it'll take, uh, it'll contribute to the entire ecosystem in a large way. Well, actually that is something that you're right, that works very well uh, because for our fellowships, we usually onboard 25 to 50 devs. And what we have seen is after the cohort as well, 
they stick to the whatever communication medium they are at. And it's great where they are bouncing off ideas, they're building stuff together. So yeah, collaboration is also a key part, I think. We don't have crowdsource sessions in the terms, but we have small developers group in our university community and we are trying to motivate them to build something together. This can be little groups, projects, or this can be attending some online or physical hackathons. And we do the earn part by motivating people to, when they create something beneficial for the club, for the community, they will get its revenue by earning the profits of earning the grants of the or all of the stuff, all of the education by maybe going another hackathon in another country, maybe reaching some educational content. It's our way to motivate people to collaborate and earn something. Thank you. I think we're just about time now. And before you guys leave, I just wanted to have two quick announcements. Well, and one other thing. Luca didn't get to introduce himself whenever he started this panel, and I just want to mention that him, along with the Ethereum.org team, has been able to get the website translated into 50 languages. Um, I mean, I mentioned that earlier in her talk, but I just think that's an amazing feat. Snaps there.